Okay, so this is yet another example from chapter 9, and this is the first time where we have an angled force. It is probably something that you want to make a note of um, to re-watch this video. Um, this one and example 9H are the ones that are probably the most useful to refer back to when you feel really stuck on some of our tougher problems. So re-watching um, these example videos is one of the ways to take advantage of the fact that we're in this um, new online format. And, and this is probably one that more so than some of the other more introductory examples, one that you will probably want to refer back to. Okay. It's also the first time that we have a hinge where rather than choosing where we want to put our axis, our axis has been determined for us. Any time that we have a hinge given to us in a problem, that becomes our axis. Okay, so let's draw the real picture here. We have a wall and the hinge is our axis. And we have this beam here where there is a rope attached and there is a mass um, also attached to the beam. And there's a 40 degree angle. I'm not drawing that very big or being um, very slow and deliberate about it because it's the same picture that's in our slide. So we need to look at the forces on the bar. So we're going to draw the free body diagram of the bar. And so this we need to be a little bit careful of. So first of all, let's start with gravity. That one's easy enough for us to be aware of and, um, and think about. So we'll start with the gravity of the bar itself. And if we look back at the slide, we're told that the bar has a mass of three kilograms. So when we're doing mg, it's three times 9.8. And so that's 29.4 newtons. And we have the force of gravity of the um, load mass, the four kilogram load mass. And so Fg of the extra block that we've attached to it is mg here, which in this case is four times 9.8. And so we get 39.2 newtons. Okay, we also see the rope and rope means tension, and tension is gonna pull away from where it is attached to the bar. We're not drawing a free body diagram of the wall. We are drawing a free body diagram of the bar. So because it is attached over here and pulling away along the rope, we're gonna have this angled force of tension, which is gonna have a horizontal and a vertical component. So to maybe make that a little bit clearer for ourselves. I'll call this tension along the um, hypotenuse here. And then we'll have Tx and Ty. And just to make it really clear for ourselves, that Tx component, the horizontal piece, is the tension times the cosine of 40 degrees. And the Ty component is the tension times the sine of 40 degrees. Now, if we look here, what we notice is something important. This cannot be all of the forces acting on the, um, acting on the bar because there's no forces pointing to the left here. Now, something that is really important for the hinge, something that we are seeing for the first time in this example, but we will see several examples, um, one more recorded full video, and then several examples in the practice problems that we post and the example problems in the problem set that we'll try. That hinge force has an X component that we'll call HX and a Y component that we'll call HY. And that hinge is something that we cannot actually just think of as a normal force. It is more complicated than a normal force because that hinge is going to push or pull whatever it needs to do to keep this thing in static equilibrium. If you imagine a door um, that you have nearby in the room that you're in, that door has a hinge. You can pull the door trying to pull it away from the hinge. You can push into that door to 
try to push it towards the hinge, and the hinge is going to apply a force basically backwards from what you're doing. So in the y, in the x direction, sorry, the horizontal direction, it is obvious to us because there is only right forces at the moment that there has to be a left force coming from that hinge. But the up and down part of the hinge is less obvious to us. It is possible that that hinge is preventing this thing from sliding downwards or it is preventing this thing from sliding upwards. If we had the statics lab, one of the parts of the lab is setting up these different examples so that we see in real life what these situations look like. The hinge force in the y direction could go in either the up or the down direction. We just need to choose one and we'll discuss at the end of the problem how we can tell if our choice was correct or not. So I'm just gonna draw it up for now without knowing if that's actually the correct direction, but we just need to choose a direction that we're um, starting with. That now is all of the forces acting on the bar. It is also worth noting that the two forces that I drew in red here are acting at the hinge, which means now that we're transitioning to our torque diagram, we do not need to put those forces into our torque diagram because they're happening at the axis. So our torque diagram, just like before, the bar itself is flat. We have a flat bar. We do not have an angled bar. We will see that in the following two problems, and we saw it with the chicken in the previous problem. We have the hinge already deciding where our axis is going to be, and so there's no choice to be made there. And so now we put in our forces. If we start here and we go out halfway along the bar, we will get to the force of gravity um, for the bar itself, 29.4 newtons. And halfway along the 1.6 meter long bar would be 0 0.8 meters. At the very end of the bar, that is where we have our um, 39.2 newton force. And that distance is a full 1.6 meters away. Now here's something important here, and I am going to, um, I'm going to refer back to the force diagram that we made. If we look at the x component of the tension, it is pointing directly towards the hinge, lined up with the hinge itself, because the tension is happening at this far point. But if we think about the x component of the tension, it is zero perpendicular distance away from the axis. And so this one is not gonna cause a torque here. It is not going to cause a torque because it is not perpendicularly away from the hinge. The Y component, so I'm gonna write T subscript Y, just this piece, that is perpendicular distance away from the axis. It is also 1.6 meters, so that one's going to be used twice. It is also 1.6 meters away from where the hinge is. So with our axis here, this 29.4 newtons is causing counterclockwise rotation. This 39.2 newtons is ca causing counterclockwise rotation as well. Both of those things, if the rope were cut, the bar would rotate counterclockwise. And if somebody tugged on the rope to make it a bigger tension than it currently is, that bar would swing upwards and we would have clockwise rotation. So we have torques clockwise equal torques counterclockwise. And in this particular situation, we have a single clockwise torque. So Ty times the distance is 1.6 meters. And there are two counterclockwise torques. So we can just put them both in either order. Those terms are going to be added together. So either order works. 39.2 newtons is a full 1.6 meters away. The 29.4 newtons is only 0.8 meters away. So I'm going to plug this whole right side into my calculator. You can do it in two steps, but I'm just going to do it all in one. So it's 39.2 times 1.6. And I put that in parentheses just to kind of 
make sure I knew that that's the order of operations. The 29.4 is multiplied by 0.8, and when those terms are all added together, we get 86.24. The other thing I'm going to do writing down the next step is the y component of tension, and let me use red to really highlight it here. The y component of tension we can rewrite as the full tension times the sine of 40 degrees times 1.6. So to solve for the tension, we need to divide both sides not just by the 1.6, but also by sine 40 degrees. And if we're dividing by both things, we can either divide one, and then the next step is divide the other, or we can divide them both as long as we use parentheses. So the tension here, and this is now the full tension in the rope, because I went from the y component to plugging in what that y component actually is. There is a big difference, and we don't want to miss that or make a mistake here. When it was the y component, it looked like that. When it was the full tension times the sine of 40 degrees, it means I'm able to solve for that full tension. So I take what I had before and I divide, without forgetting parentheses, 1.6 sine 40 degrees, and I get 83.8 newtons. Okay. So that is the tension in the rope. If we look back at the problem on our slide here, we're asked to find the tension in the rope and the x and y components of the force from the hinge on the bar. So because I don't want to lose this part, I'm going to actually erase the torque diagram. So if you need it, you can pause the video or rewind, but I'm going to erase the torque diagram and the original diagram. That way we can have this kind of clear portion where we're dealing with the forces. Okay, so if we look, we're looking for the X and Y components of the hinge force. There is no angle associated with the hinge. We don't know what weird angle the hinge is actually applying force. We aren't asking for it. We are asking us to find HX and separately to find HY. So this is important here. This is the first time and not the only time where when we think of this big idea of F net equals zero, what that really means is that we have F net in the X direction, the total forces in the X direction equal zero. And down here a bit, the net forces in the Y direction equal zero. We did X and Y forces separately all throughout chapters four and five. And so this isn't new to us. It's just the first time that we've done it in an example problem in chapter nine. Okay, so if we look at the forces in the X direction, we have two forces. We can write them in either order, but because they point in opposite directions, because they point in opposite directions, we have to have one of them positive and one of them negative. So we could write the hinge force in the x direction minus the tension in the x direction, or tension minus hinge force. So the x component of the hinge force, I'm going to add tx to both sides, is equal to, and I know I crossed it out for effect earlier, but the hinge force, uh, the x component of the tension is going to be tension times the cosine of 40 degrees, the full tension times the cosine of 40 degrees. So we have this 83.8 cosine 40 degrees. And so we get, as our result, 64.2 newtons. So in the x direction, the hinge is applying 64.2 newtons to the left, as we've drawn it, to the bar. Perfect. For the y direction, we have one, two, three, four different arrows. So we'll have all the ones that point up, hy plus ty minus all the ones that point down. And I'm just going to plug in the numbers, 39.2 and 29.4. Of 
equals zero. So first of all, I'm gonna add the two numbers that we have um, to both sides. So HY plus TY equals 68.8. I've done so many of these problems today um, that I'm just double checking my math. Yep, 68.6. Uh, and Ty, we can write down as the tension times the sine of 40 degrees. So the hinge force, and I'm going to subtract that Ty on both sides, is 68.6 .6 minus the hinge, or the tension, Ft, times the sine of 40 degrees. Okay, so the hinge force in the y direction is 68.6 .6 minus 83.8 sine 40 degrees. Okay, so 68.6 .6 minus 83.8 sine 40 degrees. And we get 14.7. 14.7 newtons. Okay, something important here. First of all, I'll bring this a little bit closer so we can see it a bit better. It's kind of messy math, but it's fundamentally not something new to chapter nine. There are four forces and they add up to zero. We did that all throughout chapters six and seven, or four and five. The thing that I wanna point out though, is remember back when we decided that we were gonna draw this hinge force up we might have drawn it down initially and gotten a negative sign. Whenever we are doing hinge forces where the situation is not clear what direction they're supposed to point, choose a direction, and if you get a minus sign in either spot here, then the direction that you chose is just the wrong one. You don't have to redo the entire problem, you just need to acknowledge that if you drew it down but got a minus sign, that minus sign means it's pointing backwards from how you drew it. Not a problem at all, but it's something we want to be aware of. So look for situations like that as you're doing example problems. There are several in the extra practice set number nine um, to be able to look at, as well as the other assignments that we have in this chapter. So like I said, this may be an example problem that you want to revisit in a couple of days, more so than some of the others. But we've got two more in this chapter, so I will see you in the next one.